Welcome back. Halftime concluded. We are back underway here at National 2013. Number 10, Avalon, somehow manages to get the ball up and block that chest pass. Let's go, let's go, let's go. A little bit of disputes on the left side. I know. Opening rush. I've come around on it, but it's still a lot of confusion because yeah. there's so many people in such a tight area. Ooh. Number 55 taking down uh, number 7 there. Oh, man. Yeah, it's a good idea, a good strategy to take out their best players first, if, you know. But if you think about it, sometimes you want to bury that best player on the jail line a little bit. If he goes out first, he's the first one back in. Well, that's true. So there is something to be said for waiting to take out the best player until maybe fourth or fifth. Because most teams at max will maybe get four or five catches a point, you think? That is true. You have a really valid point. Number 57 gets hit on the back there from Northwestern State goes out. 55 with the kill on number 10, Avalon. It's really frantic right now. I think we need a little bit more ball shaggers on the sidelines. <laughs> that would be nice. 60 goes out there for Northwestern State, dropped the ball he was blocking with. Tumor number five is upset. 10! Walk with Shannon. 11! 12! Number five, Tumor, get out. Yes. Okay. Nice little uh, chest high throw there from 32. It's easily caught by the Miami player. I noticed uh, Miami actually has a couple catchers on her team. Yeah, they do. They've made quite a few catches thus far. In this game. Imagine if they had a full 15 on 15 squad. I think this would be a much different game, but I still think Northwestern State would be leading. They have been the better team thus far. True, they're a lot more aggressive on yes. the offensive front. If you notice, Miami has been on their baseline for most of the game. Yes, I've also noticed that today. Another catch brings back at number seven. So like I said, that strategy sometimes can backfire. But in the same uh, instance of that, number 54, who could actually throw, he's out. Yeah. It's always good to have a few aces up your sleeve. Yep. <laughs> yeah, dodgeball, possibly the only sport where commentators have to be just as aware as the players of where the balls are on the court. That is true, that is true. Oh. Is he in or is he out? I don't know, that was a pretty close shot. You just tend to trust the player's judgment. That's kind of where we're at right now with college dodgeball. If the guy says it went off the ball, you just have to trust him that it went off the ball. Demon dodgeball, they are not backing down. They're staying in neutral zone, stacked on the left side. Yes, they are. They're pretty much Eddie Mammy on just to throw that up. Number seven moving up the sideline. Oh, just messes with this throw. Ooh, nice cross. It didn't hit anything, but it's still nice. Yes. You can tell Miami has some talent. It's just hard to form strategy when you don't really have that committed core of players, which it would appear that Miami does not with only bringing 10 players to Nationals. Whoa. That also leads to a different topic I would like to talk about. What do you think about the 10 out of 10 versus the 15 out of 15? Oh, I think... That's a whole other, that's a whole podcast, honestly. But okay, uh, my brief opinion is that 15 on 15 is the way to go. It's uh, unique to college dodgeball. No other sport has that many players on the playing field at one time. That's true, and uh, you know, it definitely uh, lends itself to more action because you have more players making more throws. So games tend to get usually a little less exciting when there are fewer players. So no, I'm not in favor of reducing the uh, the roster size per point to 10 on 10. Uh, getting back to the game, <laughs> we've had quite a lot going on. Uh, we'll talk about North that later. Northwestern State has been whittled down here quickly to four players. Is that right? 
It's about four players. Yeah, four players. Five, they do six, hold the ball advantage, though. Seven, eight, nine. And number 58, I believe, was going to throw and hit his teammate's shoulders. Five, the ball kind of just lollygagged six, up in the air there. But seven, still comes. I'm a bit surprised that Miami's up right now. Five, six, six, I'm a bit surprised that Miami's up. Well, it's the, it's the ball advantage, I think. Northwestern State is making these throws and getting the you know the ricochets. It's allowing them to stay up and stay aggressive. Seven. Number 55 has just really impressed me. I haven't seen a whole lot of players this weekend with this kind of dogged tenacity to stay up there and just make as many throws as necessary to get the job done. Catch there takes out number 48 for Northwestern State and brings back in number 54 for Miami. Five. Northwestern State now whittled down to three players. It is three of their better players, though. What's well, going to be the challenge now is Northwestern State with three players is really going to be uh, stretched thin to make the shot clock each time. Number 58, Ramos, and number 55 are uh, definitely three of Northwestern State's best players. So if nothing else, if they lose this point, they can grind out some time and make it more difficult for Miami to come back. Miami's pushing up a little bit. They're back in the neutral zone, finally. Oh, wow, what a great catch there by Ramos. Way backfired. Brings back in another great player, number 56 for Northwestern State. Five, six, seven, eight. Another player went out for Miami there. I can't quite see a number, but it looked like it happened on a group throw for Northwestern State. That is tough. Number seven is definitely gunning for 55 here. Yes. He knows that that's going to be the key. If they take out 55, Northwestern State will probably lose this point. If Miami can get some team throws coordinated, they actually have a chance. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much solo throwing everything. And number 58 goes out there as one of the balls he was holding dropped on that throw, so he is out. Miami, the number seven, got that kill. Uh, he has one of the stronger arms on the Miami team. Yeah. And I would say Miami, number seven, is definitely a veteran player because that is one of Miami's older jerseys. They actually had those back when I was still playing. So number seven has definitely been around for a while. You've only been out of the game for like two years. Come on now. Uh, a little longer than that. It's two and a half. Three years now, this man. Ball's flying into the commentator's table. That's actually the first time I've gotten hit all day. So I'm actually going to buy, buy like a ricochet. Oh, me and Boomis, man. We had problems earlier. They missed <laughs> Did you? Yes. Three Northwestern players left in, 56, Ramos and number 55. Well, I'll have to get his name because he is definitely deserving of that having means, his name said rather than just his number. That he deserves an interview after this game. I agree. Wicked throw by Mammy, number seven, one of the veteran players. How did 56 go out there? Down to one, number 55, the lone survivor. Let's see what he can do here. Number 56. Number eight, Meyer, misses his opportunity to uh, take down 55 there. He was creeping along the sideline right next to the scorer's table, but just came up short. It would have been a good snipe. It would have been a good snipe. 
I didn't even see him there. He's totally ninja. He was ducking right in front of us, literally. We couldn't see him. Uh oh. Bam, he's doing a train formation. We used to call that the sideline assassin. The players that would creep up the sidelines, you wouldn't see him until it was too late. Wow, and a very clutch catch by number 10, Avalon. Secures the first point for Miami, so uh, here with uh, some time gone by in this second half, it is uh, Miami 1, Northwestern State 3.